Welcome to Insight Builder channel. Large language model automators, Python experts and my dear friends. Can you tell me about Argilla? How Argilla makes A developers lives easy? In this video, we are going to first of all start by discussing the why of Argilla. Argilla helps to automate the curation and annotation process of the dataset. Both curation and the annotation. The datasets are curated for training a model for a specific task. That's very important. The data format for each of the task and the way it is fed into the model is different. We all know that and having the data ready for such a task is a, a very challenging aspect in itself. Argila makes it very, very simple. Argila streamlines the annotation process with various types of questions. We will be seeing that also. But before that, how Argilla does all these things? Argilla is a client server architecture where the client or the front end provides the interface for us to do two things. It provides the interface for us to work with the data set and do the annotation process and also it provides a front end in the form of client through python client or through cli where you can input the data set into the server while at the back end it helps to store the data set and it also provides various interfaces through which you can get the data set back and you can start training it in fact argilla has a interfaces with various uh, training libraries like transformers, spacey, setfit, etc. to which it can provide the data set from the server. The, these kinds of uh, the data sets are exposed through various methods that is already available inside Argilla. Not just that, when it comes to the input of the data also, lots of streamlined methods are already present. Like Argilla has got its own listeners which can listen to the aspects of the APIs where the model is hosted. If you're hosting a large language model in the API, it can be made to listen to that API and it can start recording the human inputs that is coming from coming to the API. Other method uh, which we can use is if you are going to push documents, if you are going to, you know, start working with documents, which is uh, or HTML pages, it could be PDFs, it could be various other uh, kinds of uh, uh, word documents that you want to work with all these things can be streamlined using the Argilla interface with various libraries for all these things there should be a very strong framework as I already explained it is a client server framework the client is written uh, the client is provided access through CLI that is written in Python while the backend is written in fast API and also the front end, what we are going to look at in a couple of minutes is written mainly in JavaScript. Fine. When it comes to the architecture, I am going to give you a very brief architecture. I am not going to dive into the nitty gritty details here. I am just trying to make it simple. Here, when, it, when you look at the Argilla uh, user interface or the Argilla ecosystem, we have a user domain where you have to create and register first of all in order to start working with Argilla. And once you are inside, you need to create a workspace. Inside the workspace only, you can do all the activities like loading the data set, doing the annotation, creating questions, all the uh, creating fields for the data sets, making the records, all these things you can do it inside the workspace only. So workspace is the entry point. You can create as many workspaces as you want and you can pull as many users to that workspace as you want. All these things we will discuss in the next videos. Inside the workspace, important uh, point is that it contains the datasets. The datasets are going to contain records. That is how the, uh, the hierarchy is. Workspace, datasets, records. The datasets are of various types text classification, token classification data set, text to text classification data set. These are various types, but from the recent updates that I have been reading through Argilla, they are, it is all getting uh, unified under feedback data set. I'm still 
uh, experimenting with it already we will be looking into feedback data set record in this video in the experiment in the demo in couple of uh, seconds but uh, learn uh, you know having different kinds of data sets built into the uh, backend where you can actually push your uh, data that is the text and even annotate on top of it is really phenomenal you will see that once you see that in action then you will understand what i'm talking about so what let's now dive into the demo the demo that i'm going to show you is going to be uh, it is already hosted in uh, hugging face hub spaces the hugging face hub spaces is a uh, is available for free for a certain uh, level of ram 16 gb of ram above that you will be uh, needing to pay but 16 gb of ram is more than sufficient and in argilla there is a link through which you can directly do the installation and it's pretty fast you don't need to really worry about how the installation process works but i will be explaining you that in the next video now it's time to take a demo once you are once you have completed the installation of uh, argilla server and uh, client all the all the stuff happens in parallel even the elastic search uh, is also installed in parallel for working with the embedding uh, vectors you will be given you will have to start a workspace all these things the creation of workspace the in, uh, you know connecting and uh, pushing the data set everything will be done through python interface i'll be sharing that uh, in, in uh, the next videos after you do all these things you will be able to explore the data sets so let's first of all enter into e expl ds this is one of the uh, you know versatile kind of a data set that i have created which contains everything that you need to understand about argilla this is a feedback data set and this feedback data set contains the fields text fields that is human input and the expected output you can consider the human input as a prompt and expected output as a generated output from the model now you know this when you are going to give a prompt to a model you need to get a get an output and that output should be good i mean it should be useful right it should it should follow the instructions or it should complete the task it should uh, you know make uh, wonderful apps in fact okay but does it do it you are giving a particular uh, uh, sentence here it's very small sentence but and there is an output it is saying do you think so uh, how will you rate this you can actually rate it based on the quality you can provide a correction you can uh, you can actually say whether the uh, whether the reply is uh, yes or no you can uh, also say what kind of uh, data or the information that the particular uh, prompt contained and how will you want the replies to be so if you are going to have multiple replies from the uh, llm and how you are going to how the replies have to be ordered all these kinds of uh, questions you can answer on the output again i am repeating the output of the model can be rated and based on rating that output you can actually improve the model that is the that is how you can actually train the model okay this is counterintuitive right you are actually expecting to create and curate a data set for uh, for working with creating new models but what you are seeing here is it feels like actually there is an existing model and you are trying to improve that model okay what we are seeing here right now is one of the applications of one of the applications of argilla that is re reinforced human hu uh, reinforced learning with human feedback rlhf way of you know working with the models that's what i showed you but if i go back and if you go into this isw summarize it's one of the data set uh, tutorials that is provided and there you can actually see that uh, the uh, the summary the input as well as the summary of uh, the of both the sentences can be created so in this case the we have taken uh, taken a huge amount of record it's around some 10 to 15 uh, 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 10 to 15 sentences which has been curated uh, which has been you know summarized into small uh, three to four sentences of summary and all these things whatever you have got here has been already put 
from the URL and it has been uploaded into the uh, Argilla server. Here you can already see that if I don't have this, assume that I don't have this. So in this location, you will provide the summary of all these things. All this you will read read this entire sentence and then you will type the summary like this. So if I come and type like this and then you click on validate, now the data set is validated and it gets updated to the backend. After that has been updated to the backend, you can actually use this as a you can use this as a data set. So this data set contains, uh, if you look at the metrics, it contains 284 data points, meaning there are 284 uh, paragraphs like this and 284 summaries like this. And you can train a summary model or you can fine tune uh, a summarization model using this data. Apart from that, you can see that whether you are going to do a hand labeling or you are just going to explore. That is one thing that you can do in this uh, user interface. You can look at the metrics that how many has been validated and how many has been discarded. You can look at the various keywords that is present here. And uh, also you can uh, do a lot more in this. So let's go back to the home and let me show you a couple of other options that is present inside uh, the present inside this uh, Argilla frontend. So if you go to squad with meta all this uh, information that i'm sharing will be explored in detail in coming videos he here we have a lot of uh, almost 96 records and if you want to sort these records you can use all this metadata and you can start sorting it so you can uh, start sorting the metadata based on the tokens that is available you can uh, so sort the data based on you can filter the data based on the unique tokens you can reduce the unit tokens and you can filter it and you can sort it based on that you can see now it has reduced from 96 to 49 that is one thing by using the metadata next you can go into the embeddings you can actually create embeddings for the uh, for the data that you have got and you can find similar data so if i there is a around what time lobund of notre dame became independent so the Lobund Institute grew out of pioneering research and all these things are there. And I can actually create a find a similar article, which is, uh, which is close to this particular context. And you can see that when I click on uh, find similar immediately, the uh, update changes. So there is hundred records here. And if I click find similar, the record immediately changes to 50. And if I reduce the number to 10, it reduces to 10 and I can change which is least and close to similar. All these things are possible because I have complete, I have embedded the text data using the sentence transformers and the vectors are stored inside the elastic search in the backend. All these things are possible with Argila. I just want to, you know, give you a very, uh, you know, top level overview in this discussion so that you can understand what is possible with Argilla. So think about it. You can actually create a question and answer data set and you can modify this. So these answers that you see here, I have already updated it, but this update was done automatically. It was not done by hand. You can create data sets. You can, uh, you know, get the data sets from the third party. You can push it into the Argilla server and you can modify it. After modifying it, you can again, uh, take this data set out and you can do the training. So for an example, you can take the data from the hugging face up using the data set uh, library, load it back into the Argilla, do the annotation and then take the annotated data set and do the retraining. All these things can be automated also. In fact, you can, as I already told, you can connect the Argilla listeners with the models that you're already having in the uh, in the wild in the apis etc that is that is live and you can start collecting the data and you can do the annotation in the backend also so someone can uh, you can actually watch your model as it uh, answers the question based on the context and then you can also get the answer and you can provide a uh, provide additional uh, ranking and rating process or questions that can update these answers that is all possible through feedback data set so this is a you know very 
high level overview as i already told you and uh, let us go back to the presentation if you uh, look at the uh, look at the main points that you need to understand we can create feedback data sets with fields and questions feedback records contains the fields there are almost six types of questions label multi label ranking rating span and text questions span is deprecated i suppose but rest of the questions are still alive records can be added and given to annotators so that's how it works so what you saw here this particular interface can be given to various users in this case i am lo logging in as a owner but we can create multiple users also and we can start giving the link the link to the users and they can uh, they can sign in and they can start annotating the data so if you have if you are having a team of annotators and if you want to uh, take their sort their help with a particular data set argilla is going to be a life saver for you it has done it lot of work has been uh, automated and uh, streamlined for uh, getting the data from the annotators modifying it and then uh, feeding it into the uh, models like transform model setfit or uh, pytorch and various other uh, large language models training uh, large language model training libraries and do the training i believe that uh, this will be a very interesting uh, series of videos that i'll be you know presenting so if you have any questions do let me know in the comment and uh, if you like the video do leave a like and share it with others also subscribe to my channel for further updates on similar kinds of videos and stay tuned for the next video where we'll dive into how to install argilla and start working with the various users get the workspaces and connect to python client with that said i would like to leave the video with four words that is practice practice explore explore see you guys have a great time